Did you know that almost every single mental health disorder has some sort of gut disorder along with it? It doesn't matter if it's anxiety, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, autism, or any other label that the medical establishment has gave you. If you have mental health issues, you likely have gut issues. And the opposite is true. If you have gut issues, you likely have mental health issues. This is because the brain and the gut are intimately connected. What's up guys? Welcome to Activate True Health. My name is Alex Stensberg. On this channel, I'm talking about living food and plant-based nutrition, all things health and wellness, and the connection between the life choices that we are making and the life experiences that we are having. If any of that sounds like something you want to learn more about, consider hitting the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you get updates whenever I make a new video. On this video, I'm going to be talking about the gut-brain connection. So let's get right into it. There are numerous studies now showing the connection between gut health and brain health. Especially in the last five or ten years, this area of research has really exploded. Now, just because that here in the Western world this area of research has exploded doesn't mean that this knowledge hasn't been known for a very long time. Ancient healing traditions such as traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine have known the gut-brain connection for a long time. Studies show that people who have gastrointestinal issues or gut issues meditate, practice mindfulness, and other stress relieving techniques, they're able to get some relief from their symptoms. This is because stress communicates to the gut via the vagus nerve, and it also has an impact on what's called the microbiome, which is the colony of different microorganisms that live in our gut. We also see when people heal their guts, they heal their brain and their mental health disorders go away. We have an entire nervous system that lines our whole GI tract called the enteric nervous system. It's one of the main divisions of the autonomic nervous system and it communicates to the central nervous system and the brain via the vagus nerve. It's our more primal part of our nervous system because it's what we used to have to rely on way back in the day before humans were super intelligent. We were in touch with our gut feelings. If we had a, a gut feeling about something, a bad gut feeling, we would run the other way. And nowadays, this isn't so much the case. I feel like as humans, we need to start tapping back into those instinctual gut feelings. Something that's interesting is in the womb, when a human is being created, the GI tract is one of the first things that are created, and then everything else comes out of that. Another thing that's interesting is there's 10 times as many nerve fibers, they're called afferent fibers, that go from your gut to your brain than the other way around from your brain to your gut. So this truly shows that the gut is more in control of the brain than the brain being in control of the gut. And this also shows how important that the gut is for mental health issues. Scientists are, no, are now calling the gut the second brain and for good reason, but I could even argue that it could be called the first brain. So there's two ways that the brain and the gut can communicate. One way is what we just talked about, which is through the nervous system and the vagus nerve. Now how this communication actually happens is basically if everything is going fine and dandy in the gut and everything's happy and everything's working as it should down there, the gut is sending that communication to the brain via the vagus nerve saying, hey, everything's fine down here. You guys are good to go too. And then everything is fine. But if there's inflammation in the gut and things aren't going so, so good, then the gut is going to send that same message back up to the brain and the brain is going to inflame itself thinking that everything's not okay and it's going to go into a stress response thinking that everything's not okay and this is where dysfunction starts to happen. And the same goes the other way around too. If there's inflammation, dysfunction, or some kind of stress in the brain, it's going to send that same signal back down into the gut and say, hey, everything's not okay up here, guys. We're stressed out. We're inflamed. You guys need to be stressed out, inflamed, and on alert too because everything's not okay. And this is when gastrointestinal dysfunction happens and 
people get symptoms like bloating um, or that's why you see people will actually throw up when they're really stressed. So all the stress, you know, in the brain could come from um, traumatic experience that someone's going through, you know, really stressful job, really stressful marriage, um, ruminating thoughts, all these things that are creating stress in someone's life is actually sending signals down into the gut saying, hey, we're not okay. You guys need to stop digesting food and actually put all your energy elsewhere because we're stressed out. We're in fight or flight mode and we need to not worry about digesting food right now. We need to be worrying about fighting and flighting. The second way that the gut and the brain are connected is through the microbiome and the metabolites they produce. I spoke earlier on the microbiome. It's the, mic it's the colony of microorganisms that live in your gut, such as bacteria, viruses, and fungus. That might sound scary, but really most of them are our friends and they produce byproducts as part of their metabolism that are beneficial to us. They release neurotransmitters, hormones, they control inflammation, they speak to the immune system because actually 70% of your immune cells live in your gut in it's called the gut-associated lymphatic tissue. That's basically the police force of your immune system. It's the police station of your immune system, and that's where most of your immune cells hang out. So the microbiome produces such things as serotonin and dopamine, which control mood. They produce gamma butyric amino acid, which, or GABA, which is responsible for mood anxiety um, and just being kind of chilled out. They produce hormones, which communicate back to the brain. They produce brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which helps grow um, new brain cells and do other things. And they also actually help your intestinal cells make more serotonin and make more dopamine themselves. So there's, there's many things that the, these bacteria and different microorganisms do in our guts, but they release these byproducts which then flow through our bloodstream, which then get to our brain and have effects. Another thing that they do, or another metabolite of theirs, is called butyrate. This happens when um, they ferment fiber. When you eat fiber-rich foods, these bacteria will ferment the fiber and butyrate is produced. And this butyrate goes up to your brain and actually helps build the blood-brain barrier, which helps to keep out toxins and foreign particles and helps just allow certain things that the brain needs, such as glucose and amino acids, in. But it keeps all the bad stuff out. And this butyrate helps to build that wall. So if you're not eating fiber rich foods, you don't have as much butyrate and your blood brain barrier is going to be um, not as strong and more toxins and things will be able to easier penetrate the brain, which is going to influence mental health. That's it for this video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. If you learned something or you have anything to say, leave a comment down below. I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say about the gut-brain connection. If you want to see more videos like this and other videos on plant-based and living food nutrition, make sure to subscribe to my channel here and press that notification bell so you get all the updates when I make a new video. I'm gonna create videos about once a week. I will see you guys on the next one. Much love.